Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. No matter where you are, welcome. Thank you for joining us. This is a World Food Forum side event, raising the level of nutrition for all. Make your action count. I'm the moderator today, Robin Wu from China, uh, the food and nutrition consultant at FAO. I am so proud. Uh, together with my young colleagues, set the stage for yours, for ourselves to discuss how we can act for better nutrition and beyond. Aligned with uh, World Food Forum, this is a youth lead and for youth event. Today, in the coming hour or so, you will listen, um, you will learn the, like, uh, how FAOs work in nutrition and how youth will involve in this process and there will be a group of young professionals discuss how we can enable house, healthy diets for all. We hope you can enjoy the event and really engaging in the event. So feel free to share your thoughts in the chat box, in the Q&A session, or raise your hands so we can give you the stage. Exchange with us. So without further ado, wow, it's, it's my great honor to invite Dr. Maximo Toledo to give us the opening remarks. I think you all know him very well, the chief economist of FAO, the chair of the youth committee and the researcher. Dr. Toledo, please take the floor. Thank you, thank you very much, Robin. And it's a real, real pleasure to be here with you this morning and especially to see how amazing work uh, the youth have been doing during these days of the World Food Forum and and which we hope uh, will continue empowering uh, the work that we are doing. So today we're going to discuss about the process of the transformation of agri-food systems uh, to enable healthy diets and improve nutrition for all. Good nutrition is fundamental for reaching targets across all of the sustainable development goals, and healthy diets are a prerequisite to good nutrition. Today we have become accustomed to hearing figures for malnutrition, and they don't seem to shock us anymore although they should, and we need to keep repeating the numbers. But it's not just repeating the numbers, it's also trying to find the solutions to the problem. Because despite global commitments, despite investment, despite technology, we are failing. We are not achieving what we are supposed to achieve. We have 8 billion people in the planet, which by 2050 will be 10 billion. And more than a third of us, 3 billion, uh, cannot have access to the cheapest healthy diet. So one in nine of us is hungry, and one in three overweight or obese, and a quarter of children under five are stunted, and 45 million are wasted. So we can continue talking about the numbers, and we need to keep doing it, but we need also to start acting and doing the change. Why is this so important? Because although we came up with the three billion people that don't have access to healthy diets in the last two SOFIs, the state of food and agricultural insecurity, uh, we still need to find why and what is the solution to that. If we just map the world today and we look at food groups that are needed to be able to achieve access to healthy diets, we will see that some continents like the African continents don't have most of the food groups that are needed. Although at the global level, we have the production. We are very close to have all the needed production for healthy diets supply at the world level. But distribution seems to be a big challenge today. And the move of food across borders and the move of food within countries even to be able to achieve access to healthy diets. So we need to start looking at this question very carefully and we need to try to find a solution. And you young people have enough energy to help us to go out of the box. And please be careful. I am not transferring the responsibility to you. I am just saying you have to play the game with us because we need innovation, we need new ideas. And today's session is a good initiative to discuss how FAOs work on nutrition, respond to those challenges, and how you can let this process or work with us in this process to be able to achieve access to healthy diets for all. As all of you know, FAO is changing. This year, FAO adopted a new strategic framework for 2022-2031 to empower the transformation of agri-food systems for better production, better nutrition, better environment, and better life. These four betters, of course, are all interrelated and achieving all of these aspirations is needed for healthy diets and achieving healthy diets in turn supports achieving all four aspirations. So the work on nutrition and the access to healthy diets goes through better production. We need to change the way we produce 
not only to be more sustainable, but also to have the diversity of products that we need to be able to achieve the healthy diet access. We need to improve nutrition. We need to be more effective in how we target nutrition, how we target populations. And we need to look at environment because we have to be sustainable. And all of that will help us to achieve this better life aspiration. So to help prioritize and catalyze actions for healthy diets, the mission of FAO's work on nutrition is to tackle malnutrition in all its forms. So undernutrition and overnutrition by accelerating impactful policies and actions across agri-food systems to enable healthy diets for all, especially for youth, women, and indigenous people, leaving no one behind. You can help us across the board. It's not just an issue of headquarters, it's not just an issue of Rome, it's an issue of rural areas, youth in the schools. We know that youth can change behavior of people. We know that youth can change upward generationally behavior of people. And that's what we need to, to push. That's where we need voices of the young. Because in certain way, you behave as a translator for us, for things that sometimes are difficult for all the generations that they don't know how to read and write. And the messages that we send to them are sometimes very difficult to understand. While the family, the kids working with them, the youth that works with them, their parents, they can translate the messages that we have to a language that they can understand. And FAO is launching as part of the WFF, the Food Icons too, which is a different language that will help also to break this barrier of communication. And this will be launched tomorrow. So we acknowledge that we cannot achieve this without your engagement. So today's event has been entirely organized, planned and coordinated by youth. And I learned that the panel today is diverse with young practitioners from different countries around the world and different sectors across the food systems. I am enthusiastic by this display of inclusion and that's the way we need to move forward. There are 1.2 billion young people in the world and the largest generation in history, which represents a huge amount of potential energy, which will include the power of youth at every level of the agri-food systems and ensure their voices are heard. We need them to bring them back to the agri-food systems. They need to play a role of the whole systems. And remember, it's agri-food systems. It's not agri-food system, it's systems, because there are many systems interrelated. Two days ago, the Transformative Research Challenge, the TRC, announced innovation awards. Numbers of inspiring research proposals and innovation ideas from youth were shared, and I was part of the committee. And I was really impressed of the innovations that were being proposed and how they were interrelated to the work we do day to day. So I encourage you, to look at that session of Saturday and to look at the videos of the innovations, not only at the winners, because the competition was very tough and I, I was called an ugly, an ugly, an ugly referee in, in, that, in that meeting. But the, the idea here is to learn from what they are doing and they are doing amazing things. So we want to hear your perspective on the challenges we are facing today and your innovative solutions. You also need to act together with us through this inclusive participation. So please be part of the change makers, be part of this movement. This is an effort that is not only this, this four or five days. We want this effort to continue for four or five years or more. And we want you to lead that effort. And that's why there is a youth assembly that is coming up with an action-oriented platform at the end of, the, of Tuesday. So I hope you will enjoy today's session and other World Food Forum events and continue the momentum of the UN Food System Summit to ensure a better future for all. This plugs perfectly in the follow-up actions of the summit because the youth is one of the levers that we want to pursue and you have to take the lead on that. So thank you again for your attention and thank you for all the enthusiasm that you young people are putting into this. It's really impressive, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Toledo. Thank you so much for um, joining us today and giving us such inspiring words. Let's see if we can make something to have some go out the box and across the border innovative ideas today. Okay, for the next, uh, we are very pleased to have Ms. Megan Harrison to give us an overview of FL's work in nutrition, highlighting the youth environment. So please, Megan, please take the floor. Great, thank you, Robin, and thank you, Maximo, for that introduction. Can everyone hear me and see my screen okay? Robin, can you confirm? Thank you. Yes. Um, so good morning, everyone. I am excited to be here with you at the first ever World Food Forum. And I'm thrilled to see so many passionate uh, young people who are dedicated to building food systems that are efficient, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable, and oriented towards healthy diets. 
It's my pleasure to be joining you all today and sharing with you a very brief overview of FAO's work in nutrition and to highlight youth involvement in that work. I wanna start though by talking about the power of authentically engaging young people. Um, in early 2020, Time Magazine featured an article about this new generation of young leaders who are becoming a political force. From Black Lives Matter, to marches on climate change, to the Arab Spring, to challenging stakeholder capitalism, young people, many of whom have grown up as digital natives, are using their voices to compel real change in society and business. And numerous surveys have suggested that this generation of young people, which includes millennials and Generation Z, tend to be more empathetic, you embrace diversity, you support equality, you're more socially progressive. You're also more tuned into the power of network and systems. And this is critical because many of the challenges we face are wicked problems that require changes to complex systems. As I heard one young person so eloquently describe it recently, we might all be in the same ocean, but we're not all in the same boat. When it comes to things like our food system, some people are cruising through on a yacht while others are in a dinghy. Yes, we might all live on the same planet, but we're not all in the same boat. And young people are key to understanding and solving the food systems challenges we're facing. And with nearly half of the world's population under the age of 30, we have a moral obligation to involve youth in that decision-making process. And so while I'm giving you a snapshot of FAO's work in nutrition today, I'm also here to listen and to learn from all of you. How can we be working better to ensure that youth aren't tokenized, but authentically engaged as equal partners in achieving our vision of a world where all people are eating healthy diets from efficient, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable food systems? As a way of introduction, uh, let's just remind ourselves of how critical the nutrition situation around the world is. These are numbers from the 2021 State of Food Security and Nutrition in the World Report and from the World Health Organization. And they show that the world is struggling to make progress towards the global nutrition related goals of Agenda 2030, including the goal of zero hunger. And while global data are not yet available that demonstrate the impact of COVID-19 on indicators of malnutrition, the mathematical models we do have estimate that all forms of malnutrition will likely worsen due to the pandemic unless we take immediate action. And this link between good nutrition and health has rightfully received a lot of attention during the pandemic. However, it's a common misconception that nutrition is exclusively a health issue. FAO country level colleagues often say that they struggle to find entry points for working in nutrition because governments regulate nutrition policy and action to the Ministry of Health, which isn't a traditional entry point for the work of FAO. However, we know that there's many factors contributing to good nutrition and a healthy diet is one of them. In fact, good nutrition starts with what we eat. A healthy diet is a prerequisite to good nutrition which means it's also an opportunity for mitigation and prevention across all forms of malnutrition. But that leaves us with a question, uh, what exactly are healthy diets and how do we enable them? So healthy diets are diets that are of sufficient quantity to address food security and sufficient quality, diversity and balance to address all nutritional needs. And of course they're safe. And how do we enable or ensure that? Well, diets are influenced by consumer behavior or personal behavior because we're all consumers of food. But these personal behavior choices, as you all know from your own experiences and uh, as demonstrated by the example I gave at the beginning of this talk, um, those, those personal choices are not made in a vacuum. They also depend on the food environment that's what's available, economically accessible, as well as appealing. So yes, individual consumers make choices, 
but the options available are often constrained by forces outside of any one individual's control. Not everyone has the option to make quote unquote good choices. And all of this is influenced by the political program and institutional actions, as well as external drivers of food systems, which we're not discussing here. Um, but I think you can see from all of this that the entirety of the food system is implicated in ensuring, in ensuring and enabling healthy diets. Because FAO's work spans the entire agri-food system, all of our work has the potential to support healthy diets. So to coordinate all that action, FAO has one common mission for nutrition, which is to tackle malnutrition in all of its forms by accelerating impactful policies and actions across agri-food systems to enable healthy diets for all. And this contributes to FAO's vision for nutrition, which is a world where all people are eating healthy diets from efficient, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable agri-food systems. And realizing this vision would mean that there would be less hunger and undernourishment, less undernutrition, and therefore less preventable child death, less overweight and obesity and diet-related non-communicable diseases, resulting in less premature death worldwide. Uh, there would also be strengthened individual resilience to combat infectious diseases like COVID-19. FAO's work in nutrition has defined the pathway from action all the way to the SDGs to enable different actors across agri-food systems to prioritize activities based on their context, capacity, and resources. So there are 15 actions clustered across five action areas around data, evidence, policy coherence and collective action, capacity, and commitment or governance. And these actions describe the nature of the work that collectively results in the completion of FAO's mission in nutrition. And advancing the mission will impact agriculture and food supply chains, food environments, and consumer behavior for more efficient, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable agri-food systems that are oriented towards all people eating healthy diets. So I just wanna take you through and provide some examples of where FAO is involving youth in implementing actions for nutrition. For example, in contributing to action area one around data for healthy diets. Here, FAO has been the lead UN agency in developing and promoting the use of the minimum dietary diversity score for women or the MDW. The MDDW is a population level indicator of diet diversity that's been validated for women aged 15 to 49 years old. And because of this, it's an important tool for assessment, target setting, and advocacy, especially for young women. The FAO GIFT platform uh, can also include individual level dietary data for youth. Uh, as you can see in the slide here, this is a snapshot of grams of food intake for men and women aged 15 to 24 years old in Mexico. And data like this enables all stakeholders to monitor and evaluate food consumption of youth in particular countries. An example of youth involvement in action area two around evidence is the joint report on developing the knowledge, skills, and talent of youth for further, to further food security and nutrition, which came out in 2015. And this report is comprised of a series of case studies from different regions that describe the challenges, successes, and lessons learned related to the development of knowledge, skills, and capacity for youth in agriculture when it comes to furthering food security and nutrition. Examples for action area three around convening policy and catalyzing action are our efforts to strengthen food security and nutrition through the education sector, particularly national school meals programs. Here, along with our sister agencies like the World Food Program and UNICEF, FAO provides technical support to countries on things like the development of nutrition standards for school meals and curricula for nutrition education in primary and secondary education systems. 
But we know that youth engagement doesn't just mean that young people are recipients of our policy or programming efforts. It's also a huge misconception that you can just put a young person at the table and have quote unquote youth participation. Um, young people need both the tools and the governance structures to become equal discussion partners and decision makers. That's why a number of our ongoing school nutrition projects are committed to promoting authentic youth engagement in things like school level committees so that young people become co-designers in their own school meal programs. An example of a contribution to action area four around uh, building capacity is a training course entitled ENACT, which stands for Education for Effective Nutrition in Action. And this training course is designed for early career youth, those in undergraduate and graduate studies, to introduce them to the principles and practices of effective nutrition education. And the course is currently being used in a number of universities across 11 countries. And finally, an example of how FAO supports youth engagement to achieve action area five around strengthening commitment are by supporting investments in youth future leaders like we see in this great example from Cambodia. This is a summary report which was published last year, and it describes the ways in which Cambodia's Council for Agricultural and Rural Development, with support from FAO and other partners, successfully engaged youth in developing their national strategy for food security and nutrition. And the report provides some great examples of youth engagement through activities such as youth forums and youth nutrition camps. Uh, FAO partners with many countries and organizations to develop tools to support nutrition sensitive policy and actions and tools to support specific initiatives such as school food and nutrition, nutrition education, as well as demand generation for healthy diets. And so if you're interested in learning more, I would encourage you to visit our website and to look at some of these resources. So in summary, FAO's work in nutrition aims to support FAO and its mission to raise levels of nutrition. And we do this by recognizing the central role of nutrition for the SDGs, by describing the direction of FAO's work to improve nutrition, acknowledging FAO's mandate and expertise in nutrition lies in safe and healthy diets, and articulating a food systems approach in support of healthy diets. But central to the su success of FAO's work in nutrition is the authentic engagement of young people. As future leaders of the world, young people ought to have an active role in designing what the world can and should look like. And what better way to build the future than by listening to the young people who will make up that future. And so with that, I want to thank you and hand it back over to our moderator for the panel discussion. Thank you so much, Megan, for, for such a clear and amazing presentations. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to learn that I feel the different action areas uh, in terms of work and nutrition. I also wish to learn all the uh, participants today, uh, if you have which area you're very interested in or data or evidence, you just type it in the chat box. Let us know. We can share more in the chat box. And for the next, yes, as Megan just mentioned, uh, we're going to move to the panel discussion. And we have uh, real practitioners, the actors across the food systems, across the world, and they will share their unique perspectives. I will now pass the floor to my colleague, Glenda, who will be the moderator of the panel session. Glenda, over to you. Thank you, Robin. Good morning, everyone. I would like to thank you all for joining us today. My name is Glenda Cabral Calzuela, and I will be your panel moderator today. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the rising level of nutrition for all, making your actions count panel discussion. Our question for you today is, how can the youth transform agri-food systems to enable healthy diets for all? Let me introduce you to our distinguished panelists. We have today Mr. Andres Jara, the founder of Roots, Rice, 
and Beans, and co and former co-manager at the Staatsgut Board. Miss Lucia Perasso, a junior project manager at the Sustainable Restaurant Association. Miss Nidi Baskar is a nutritionist at Healthify Me. Mr. Aziz Salau is an executive director, is the executive director actually, for the Community Action on Food Security Initi Initiative. And finally, Ms. Nua Saheg, a freelance food educator. Dear panelists, kindly be reminded that you have five minutes each for your presentation. And without further ado, we will start our panel uh, discussion with uh, Mr. Hara. Please, the floor is yours. Hello, good morning to everyone. I would like to um, speak with you and share with you about three, three different parts. The first one is uh, I would like to speak with you about community supported agriculture, a CSA model for the people who don't know what a CSA model is as a you know, person or customer. What you do is yeah, you marry or you uh, become a member from a farm for a whole year in order to get vegetables. Uh, every week, so it's a great, uh, it's a great alter alternative to the supermarket. In our create, in our case, what we do is that we grow uh, really diverse variety of vegetables. We grow more than sixty different vegetables, fifteen different herbs, and ten edible flowers. Um, this is just to show the diversity of the things that that we do. Um, with this, uh, of course. The, um, we do many, many examples, uh, many um, in the nutrition aspect. Let, let's go to uh, people will get fresh harvest, uh, seasonal vegetables. So we encourage and then we let people eat what is in season. Um, and then we also do uh, diverse um, production in the sense of this year we grew more than five different types of uh, uh, beetroots, for example, also to see the different nutritional aspects and, um, and also playing with different uh, ancient varieties. Uh, we reconnect people with uh, concepts like seasonality and encouraging them to actually um, eat more than the usual vegetables they normally go and buy if they go to the supermarket. Uh, with this model, it's a community-based model, meaning that the risk is shared with the farmer. So there is less economical stress for, uh, for farmers. Um, and then using, at least in our case, we use uh, regenerative organic uh, techniques. And of course, we work with concept of seasonal circular uh, economy. And we put a lot of attention to uh, the education aspect. One of the other main topics that I want to speak today is about price. So in order for this to be replicable, it needs to be profitable. So it's really uh, creates awareness and also more people wanted to use this model. So what we do is a scaling price. So actually people can choose their own price in the, in the scale. And then this is, based on solidarity principles. So actually people that have a really higher income can actually pay more and people that have a lower income but still want to be part of it, they can be part of it. So what it happens is that it balance the whole equation in which people with less can be part of it, people with more support the other two and then the farmers still get a proper salary wage. Um, another thing, that uh, we have learned in this is uh, add value to the vegetables in the sense of um, we have the opportunity to have uh, a kitchen close. We started actually in our houses um, to do to add value to your vegetables, like uh, you know jams, pickles, uh, these kind of things, and also to collaborate really close together with the like-minded people in order to reach and expand the network. In our case would be uh, bakeries and small shops in which we actually um, can put our products to sell. And then in our farm, we also put their products to sell. So this four is across uh, collaboration. Uh, and then the uh, last 
but not least, what I would like to share with you is that um, there is a lot of innovation in the world and uh, we're really working towards making a big change, but we don't have to forget going back to the roots. It's like we, our food comes from the soil and it's something that is coming for many, many years. And of course, there are many different ways of doing this. But what I invite you is to think in the old things that work and that have been working and combine it with the innovation, what we want to achieve and we want to bring. And uh, linking these two things is how we are actually bring in change in our food systems. Then uh, thank you for your time. And um, I will pass the word to my next uh, panelist colleague. Thank you, Mr. Hara. Ms. Perasso, the floor is yours. Thank you, Glenda. And well, first of all, I think it's great that uh, Andres also mentioned um, seasonality because that's kind of my point for today. Um, I am, um, yeah, quickly introducing myself. My name is Lucia. I work for the Sustainable Restaurant Association, uh, which is located in London, but I am originally from Italy. And I just got recently back from a previous period spent in Italy. And the first adjustment that I went through was uh, around food and the way I source food here compared to a Mediterranean country that is Italy. So of course, supply here and availability here is inherently different uh, to any country. So the point that I want to make today is about uh, local and seasonal sourcing linked to nutrition and the way that we as young consumers, but uh, as, as people, so regardless of age, uh, we can engage with our supply chain and create a uh, demand that um, has an impact on the supply that we finally get to our plates and on the shelves. So whenever we buy food or go to a restaurant and pick a dish from the menu, we are choosing how to invest our money, uh, which I think is great. It's very empowering. Uh, we can decide, um, we have agency as, as consumers and we can decide whether it can impact positively, positively our health and well-being or, um, or not, uh, as well as the planet's health. Now, of course, nutrition might not be top of the list when we go to, to a restaurant of, or maybe not 100% um, of the time, uh, but still we have this responsibility and also opportunity to, to make a choice. And if we're so lucky that we can actually make a choice, we have agency and that's, that's a privilege that I find really empowering. Um, so we can at the same time affect uh, our health and the planet's um, health, which I believe these two elements um, always go together and shouldn't be uh, disconnected um, from each other. So sourcing food is a matter of responsibility and empowerment. And um, as young people, the demand that we create uh, as informed um, customers or um, consumers has an impact on the supply that we ultimately get and on the transformation that we want to achieve. So going back to um, seasonality, buying what is in season and local as often as possible. Of course, a global seasonality allows more diversity into our diets, uh, but seasonal sourcing has uh, several benefits on our health, on the planet, as well as uh, social implications because we are supporting farmers um, and we are creating um, resilient um, supply from them. Um, so sourcing seasonal, um, I believe is key in that sense, um, as well as following the principle of the planetary health diet uh, and Mediterranean diet, if you live, uh, if we live in, a, in Mediterranean countries. So the way we compose our dish can really follow these um, two references. Um, so seasonal sourcing, I'm not gonna go too much into detail um, as far as benefits on our health or the planet um, are concerned, but seasonal sourcing, it, that follows uh, the natural cycles. Hopefully uh, it will have a reduced amount of chemicals and interventions will be also minimized so that the food can still reach its optimum in terms of nutrition and it just goes directly on our table. Um, and as I said before, it's a great way to support our, our uh, farmers um, and uh, producers uh, that operate in our local um, environment. Um, and going back also to the environmental impact that really depends on the production method and a great way uh, to understand what impact our food has is to um, engage with suppliers, producers, farmers directly 
uh, which is also something that Andres mentioned before. So really engaging and connecting with them to understand what standards they had in place. They might be organic or not. They may had they might have certain production methods. Uh, so really understand how food is um, is made um, and how we can achieve optimal levels of of nutrition for us and um, again for our environment. So this is more um, of a, out of an individual action, I would say, but it, but it's also about advocating to see more seasonal produce on our um, table and on the shelves, um, as well as same uh, when we dine out. So when we go to a restaurant and pick a dish from 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 a menu, um, and together with that, following the principle of uh, references such as Mediterranean diet or planetary health diet. Uh, so this is really about making the most of the nutrients that food can contain, uh, but also, and crucially, it is about using our purchasing, purchasing power uh, responsibly to influence the supply chain and create a more resilient uh, food system. So um, that was um, it for me. I will uh, pass on the mic to the next panelist. Thank you so much, Ms. Perasso. Ms. Bhaskar, the floor is yours. Hello, everybody. It's a wonderful opportunity to be amongst all of you. So uh, I'm Nidhi Bhaskar, a consultant nutritionist from uh, Health Defining. That's a um, corporate um, company wherein we deal with a lot of clients virtually. So it's a little bit of a challenge when it comes to um, dealing with clients with a lot of medical condition and also we help in weight loss. But at the end of the day, I do enjoy my job. So uh, it doesn't seem like a challenge much, but um, yeah. So and also uh, I'm very fortunate enough to be in a profession that helps in bringing about a holistic change in people's life. So that's what I'm happy about. So um, yeah, so to uh, come to today's topic, uh, I would like to start off with a little bit of uh, importance on agriculture, wherein we all know that uh, food is very important for, for us. For us to survive, the main base is food. We need to eat. But presently, um, the greatest agriculture, the greatest challenge to agriculture, I believe, is to uh, produce enough food for um, uh, to feed the whole world population. So here, my uh, focus really goes towards resilient agriculture, wherein um, talking about my country, India. So uh, the government of India is working very close with uh, uh, many uh, agriculture universities across the um, country to uh, promote the cultivation of uh, crops that are resistant to extreme climatic conditions. So I would, uh, you know, um, you know, ask the youth to uh, majorly um, focus on these uh, resistant crops and bring about a change in their um, eating habits. So basically, we do have like the base of uh, eating either rice or maize or wheat. But I would also uh, in, um, you know, request all the youths to uh, incorporate uh, millets, quinoa, chia seeds, which is more into the market now. And it's also high on nutritional uh, value. So that's one thing. And another concept that I'm very, very interested about is um, the concept of urban agriculture, wherein I would promote, uh, you know, the youth of today, if, you know, they have a patch of land around their house, just in their balcony or their uh, terrace, wherein they can grow food for themselves. So that's more of eating food that you grow. So you know that it's organic. And also, if you do produce it in higher amounts, you can also share it with the neighborhood. So that's one thing that uh, I would like to promote. And also, um, you know, in my city, that is Bangalore, Karnataka, India. So we do have uh, international millets um, fair that is conducted every year. So which does promote a lot of uh, health benefits of um, uh, the millets, the nutrition benefits of uh, millets. And also, I think uh, the um, United Nations has, um, uh, they're planning to declare the uh, year 2023 as the year of millets, wherein they are also going to promote the health benefits of millets. So I would want um, the youth not to, like, because of the um, change in the trend, because of a lot of um, uh, being uh, having a busy lifestyle, I think a lot of youths do uh, go towards convenient foods. Okay, though they have the base of the nutrition, but they don't get um, a lot of uh, benefits out of that. So I would want to, uh, you know, promote urban farming, wherein you get the nutrition, and though you do not have the culinary skills to develop a particular recipe out of it, you can include some millets or all of those foods that you grow uh, in your farm 
in your um, daily eating habits. So that's one thing. And I would just like to end my uh, discussion by saying, uh, unless there's a consumer-driven demand and movement to diversify diet, farms cannot uh, diversify and agriculture, uh, agriculture cannot be sustainable. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Baskar. Mr. Salau, the floor is yours now. Mr. Salau, you're muted. Azzy, you can just speak, I think. Can you just talk? It appears we have technical difficulties on Mr. Salau's side. Perhaps we want to go to Ms. Saheg in the meantime while we solve this issue. Ms. Saheg. Please go ahead with your intervention as we solve Mr. Salau's microphone issue. Uh, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks, uh, FAO, and thanks, World Food Forum, for holding this event. And thank you for inviting me. I'm glad to be here today. Firstly, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Nuha. I'm Syrian. I've been here in Italy for four years now. In my country, I was a teacher in elementary school. While my country was passing through a, a very sensitive period, Syria was suffering from the war. Working in a school and being in contact with the children and seeing how the tragedy of the war and hunger was extremely affecting them, made me see food from a different perspective. Food isn't offered to everyone, not in the same quantity or not in the same quality. When I arrived in Italy and starting from that point, my curiosity to learn more about food, not only as an object, but also as a subject, led me to doing my master in gastronomic sciences in creativity, ecology, and education at the University of Gastronomic Sciences. Currently, I'm a cook and a food educator. I created my project, Food Art Education, which I applied within schools, and which has the aim to educate about food through art. The project is based on three levels or parts. First level is myself which has the purpose to get children to know themselves through uh, better through food and art. This part focuses on the use of the five senses. As using them in the right way, we help to connect ourselves as a body, mind and soul with nature. The second level is the social level, aimed to educate about their own culture then, and after that, getting to learn about other cultures. The aim is to, to touch the needs of uh, our culture and to appreciate the diversity which can reach our knowledge with the focus on humanity. As we are all human living on the same earth, we are all breathing and reeking the same water. When a crisis happens somewhere far in the world, it will affect us in a way or another. The third level is the global level, focusing on sustainability, well-being, environment, agriculture, and wild plants. In aim to raising the awareness and the sense of the responsibility toward every step we take, and every action we make in changing the life on the earth. Therefore, we can recreate the harmony with nature. And as a result, they will learn how to have a healthy lifestyle, which positively impacts their life, the lives of the others, and the environment. I believe in the ability of education 
in building a better future for all of us. But I also believe that education should be accessible to everyone, especially children and youth, because they are the one who will build the future. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dihag, for your intervention. Mr. Salau, let's try to get back to you. Can you hear us and can you speak? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, thank you so much. Uh, Please go ahead. Apologies for the uh, for that uh, glitches. My name is Aziz Salau. I work with Community Action for Food Security Initiative here in Nigeria, and I am also the uh, youth leader for the UN Food System Summit, working uh, directly with the national convener here in Nigeria. So uh, I think I'll just move straight to uh, the issues happening up, up around the food system in Nigeria. So uh, for us in Nigeria, I think the main challenge for young people is number one, access to land, uh, then number two, access to uh, uh, finance, then number three, access to skills. A lot of things are actually happening uh, around uh, different uh, part of the country in Nigeria and the COVID-19, no, you know, no, no thanks to COVID-19, a pandemic that has actually come to, uh, you know, add more, 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 more to the issues around our food security. So, so we now have uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and we have an hunger pandemic here in Nigeria and it's actually very, very serious. So uh, it's actually uh, very serious until, you know, when the uh, UN food system, uh, uh, so uh, the UN Secretary General called for a UN Food System Summit, and a lot of things has, has been happening, uh, you know, since the beginning of the year up to now that we've had the uh, UN Food System Summit. So I think it's very important for 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 the for our, our government to actually work towards uh, uh, you know building uh, building a lot of infrastructural facilities for for young people, you know, to be able to do a lot of things around agriculture. This is actually very important. It's also very important for us to start. Uh, 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 adding value to what we produce, you know. So the, the value chain, I do tell people the value chain is actually very, very robust. You can be uh, a producer, you can be a processor, you can add, you know, value to everything happening on that, around agriculture. And uh, by then, young people can easily key into any of this value chain and make ends meet. You know, this would reduce the whole lot of uh, challenges around insecurity and other uh, vice, uh, uh, social vices happening around. Uh, so. So we need to start. We need to start calling on our government, on our leaders, to actually help us uh, with all these uh, things that are actually necessary to make agriculture cool, especially for young people, you know, small scale farmers and and, and 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 women. So it is very important for us to make sure that we start uh, calling on, on our government, on our leaders, with the advocacy must continue, especially now that the UN food system has ended. So what's what next? What's going to happen next? So the idea is that we want to, we want to also also make our voice heard. We want to make sure that uh, our young people's voice is heard anywhere we are. Of course, capacity building is also very important because all these things has to do with skills. Is advocacy skills, uh, production skills. You know, there are a lot of there are a lot of there are a lot of climate smart uh, uh, technologies around now. We need to also continue to build our skills to make sure that we are uh, we, we 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 adapt to a lot, a lot of things around happening around the food system. Uh, nutritious food is actually very important. We need to also stay committed. Uh, so part of what we do uh, at, at the Act for Food Act for Change campaign, uh, it's a global campaign uh, around the UN Food System Summit. Is for us to actually make sure that. We are pledging, you know, to, to to make commitment, personal commitment as, as young people to reduce food uh, food loss, food waste, you know, a whole lot of uh, junk food we eat to, 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 for us to convert it to nutritious food. It is actually very important for us to do that. Also, the Act for Change is is, 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 is young people picking uh, maybe five top priority Acts for Change and taking it forward, you know, we, 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 we presented it at, at the UN Food System so, uh, Summit uh, uh, some few weeks back. And, and the idea is for us to call our government to be accountable, you know, to make sure that young people are are part of the decision makers when we talk about you know apart from apart from implementing we want to start coordinating we want to start uh, participating in a whole lot of policy dialogues because all these things happening it's it's you know it's it's going to affect young people and our generation is going to really suffer for it so we need to be 
we need to be there to start implementing all these uh, all these uh, transformational uh, uh, activities that came out of the UN Food System Dialogue. We need to, you know, the action needs to start now. And I want us to know that no little action, uh, uh, there's no little action, especially as we are currently in the in the, in the 20, 30 the decade of action, uh, when we are looking at achieving, you know, the UN Food uh, Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. It is very important for us to, you know, continue to push for the right thing to, to be done. After, after, after the summit now, yeah, we, we need to start seeing implementation. We need to start seeing, you know, we need to start uh, seeing uh, uh, the, the right thing that is needed to be done around our food system. It is actually very important. And also we need the support of all, uh, all other stakeholders talking about the private sector, uh, the UN agencies, the multilateral uh, agencies, and also because we need to all come together as stakeholders when we talk about transforming our food system, it is actually very important. And I strongly believe that uh, through our collective responsibility, we can actually, you know, together take uh, the transformation of our food system uh, in, in any country we find ourselves. It's actually very important for us to work together collectively as young people, as stakeholders. It has to be an intergenerational uh, approach when we are looking at transforming our food system. And I strongly believe that young people are now really involved. They, are, they want to do more. They want more support and they are willing to also commit uh, their time, their energy, their resilience and their skills to all these things when we talk about uh, the, the, the food system transformation. This uh, forum is actually very important and it's coming at the right time where we are, you know, and, and we need to we need to continue to have this, this kind of engagement for us to, you know, keep, uh, keep in touch with everything that is happening around the food system. We must monitor it if we really want a sustainable transformation around our food system. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Salau, for your intervention. And thank you all panelists for a most diverse, all your diverse takes on this wonderful discussion. Now back to you, Robin. Thank you, Glenda. Oops. Thank you very much. I think we just go through from the supply chain to the consumer side, the whole food system. Thank you so much, all the panelists. And thank you, Glenda. Now I'm I'm very happy that I think we're going to have uh, 10 minutes around to do some Q&A session. And I just spotted there's a question uh, um, asked in the Q&A and Megan already asked about how FAO's initiatives or strategies uh, FAO will, tackle, uh, will, will promote to tackle malnutrition globally. I think Megan answered very well. and. I encourage you to check it out. The next question comes from Elizabeth. How can more youth be trained in uh, pre agriculture uh, agroecology and regenerative agriculture that restore soil health and produce nutrient-dense food? I think maybe Andres and Lucia, I think both of you mentioned a bit about the production, about nutrition-dense food, right? nutrient um, from our food, right? Do you want to take this question? Thank you. Uh, yes, I think uh, uh, in my case, what really helped me, it's uh, just going to farms uh, and then uh, uh, see how they work, be more involved of uh, how the food is uh, being grown and be part uh, uh, in boofing or like different programs in which you can volunteer or, or intern in the in different places. And um, first of all, well, I think it's if the the youth or the people are really interested, uh, then we should uh, actually be able to. Um, uh, teach these uh, these concepts because sometimes uh, it's the case that uh, some people want to um, like are not really interested in this. It's also sometimes the case that uh, uh, the real interest is not there. So it's 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 a difficult in in that aspect. But I would say to to start going and start just looking the farmers around you. And um, sometimes at the beginning, as a farmer, I understand that uh, the farmer has little time, but then you just knock the door. Uh, normally, they're really friendly. And if you really wanted to go uh, have a look, chat, and then where they see the genuine interest, uh, for sure, they're really, really happy to share and to teach and to share the knowledge that they have uh, with the youth. 
Yeah, and uh, yeah, I totally agree. Uh, so that really goes back to my previous point of engaging with producers, farmers and suppliers. So it's it's beneficial on both sides, really. On one hand, uh, myself as a customer, I get to see where my food is produced and how it is produced. Um, and on the other hand, uh, the farmer uh, hopefully will be happy to share uh, what his practices are about to create community in the sense of um, production community, if you want. Um, so yeah, I was uh, I was super lucky this this past summer. I went to a regenerative farm in Tuscany, and that was my first experience, hands-on experience. I get to see uh, how vegetables were grown and harvested, and and all of that, and just the the, the impact that it can have on um, customer um, awareness. It's huge, and it really connects you uh, to the food that uh, you're consuming on a daily basis. Thank you both. And the more uh, exciting thing is we just have Elizabeth join us who just asked the question. So I'm going to ask uh, Elizabeth, do you want to join our discussion here regarding your questions? And uh, yeah, please, uh, no more than two, three minutes. Thank you. Hi, Elizabeth. Uh yeah, hi Robin, and uh, thank, thank you very you. much for giving me this opportunity of speaking. Um, I think this um, webinar today, it provides an amazing opportunity to create awareness about the importance of how you grow food. Um, so what I'm advocating is that um, youth um, look into permaculture, agroecology, and regenerative agriculture. Um, if we want better population health, we have to shift the agricultural paradigm to as many farmers and producers using permaculture, agroecology and regenerative agriculture practices, because that is the only way of improving soil health, restoring soil health. Um, we need to increase the quantity and the diversity of microorganisms in the soil. I can see Andres nodding his head. I believe you're probably aware of all of this, so that's fantastic. Um, and the result is that you get more carbon sequestration, greater above and below ground biodiversity, you get better soil structure, you can't use any um, synthetic fertilizers or toxic chemicals because that kills all the soil biology. So, um, and as well, if you farm or produce food in this way, you actually get nutrient dense food that will reduce the prevalence of diet related non-communicable diseases. So I would strongly urge all the youth and young people around the world to um, look into permaculture get involved in it, um, start um, supporting farms and growers who use these progressive, or I should say traditional, as Andres said, traditional practices, um, and to create amazing change in our food supply chains. Um, so look up permaculture associations. Um, there's permaculture association in the UK. Most countries around the world have a permaculture um, network. Um, I mentioned about Perma Youth, which is an exciting network coming out of Australia. Um, and um, Woofing has been mentioned as well. And there's a very exciting regenerative agriculture network to get involved with as well. So, so many amazing pop, um, you know, opportunities for the youth and young people to transform the world. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Elizabeth bringing us this uh, amazing message on the soil health. Thank you so much. And I can see the beautiful connection with you and Andres. Yes, thank you. Okay, the next, uh, we just got another very in, um, active participant from today's webinar. I would like to call uh, Ma Ana Rita Ramirez to add her voice. Um, to share with us her point from Philippines. Anna, do you want to uh, talk to us?
Oops. You can you can talk. I think you are unmuted. Yes. But I'm sorry. I I think from my side I cannot hear you. Um. Yeah. Anyway, but uh, thank you, Anna. I think you also shared in the chat box on how you work and your initiatives in Philippines. How uh, the community uh, pantry to facilitate the transformation of agri-food system. Thank you very much, Anna. And the next, I would like I would like to um, to invite Sharon, 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 Miss Sharon Mendes, our colleague, because I know she also has one question want to share with us. Sharon, do you want do you mind to um, talk to us? Okay. Hi, Robin. Thank you so much for that. And uh, thanks so much to all the panelists and presenters for today. Um, it was really great hearing so many different perspectives from, you know, different countries and different parts of the food system. Um, I think my question is directed to Nidhi. Uh, well, I guess the others can chime in too. But uh, you spoke about urban gardens and, you know, urban farming. What do you think is the easiest plant or vegetable or fruit or, you know, to get started with? Because I think I'm terrified of growing things by myself and not confident in my um, ability to do so. So what do you think is a good plant to start out with? Thank you. Um, okay, uh, so uh, I think we have a lot of uh, scope for microgreens these days, if I'm not wrong. So uh, that's one thing that you can start off. So you can, you know, like normal microgreens like spinach okay and any other green leafy vegetable that's one thing and um uh, i think the others would be like if you have a bigger patch of land at home like if you have like a yard or something like that so maybe you can even grow um beans tomato uh, even potato can be uh, you know grown so i think um, that's something that i would could advise but i wouldn't be able to answer much about it because i'm not into the production or the agriculture as such so um, yeah so microgreens is something that i would you know want you to try sharing i would like to add uh, for example in that case easily in your balcony depending on the amount of space you just need uh, some pots and potatoes are really easy you can just put uh, pot these big layers like lasagna style of uh, soil and potatoes and then just put them in the balcony some water uh, pumpkins are really easy they don't really need a lot of uh, uh, care uh, also, uh, zucchini plants, they're really, really easy. Uh, and uh, one that uh, we also see that is really good is the uh, Swiss chard, mangold or uh, uh, bietola in, in Italian. Um, uh, it grows really well in the quite a small pot and you can harvest many times from it, uh, like uh, four to five months out of uh, a single plant. Uh, thanks so much, Nidhi and Andreas. Um, especially love the lasagna style of planting. <laughs> Gonna use that next time. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Robin. Back to you. Thank you so much, Sharon, Nidhi, and Andreas. And thank you all, the panelists, for your very insightful um, uh, interventions and also very engaging answers to our Q&A session. And well, I would like also to thank you all who put questions, um, comments in the chat box or QAs. Thank you all for uh, making this such an engaging session. Thank you all. And uh, I think it's coming uh, close to the end of today's session. Um, I would like maybe one or two sentences also share my thinking, like how, what I learned from today's uh, session, um, if I may, thank you. Uh, first, today we, we learned like how Dr. Maximo Toledo called us. We're gonna think about the go out of the box, cross-border innovative um, ideas, solutions to support the transformation of agri-food system. And I think the presentation and the panel would just combine each other, which show us two dimension of how we can act. From the presentation, how, how FAO contribute or I feel it's work in nutrition, we provide five 
key action areas. Uh, if you don't remember, data, evidence, coherent policy, uh, catalyze action, capacity, and commitment. I think those five core actions is how Apple will contribute nutrition to enable healthy diets. And it's not a separate action area. As you can see from our examples we're given to you, is all the actions can be interrelated, uh, interlinked, and all the actions can join as a one uh, force to, to enable healthy diets. And from the panel, I'm very, very, um, uh, I mean, very excited about all the intervention from our panelists is we go through from the, the, the linear logistic of, of food systems from production, we start from endless, from, from food supply, and then uh, we have a lot of interventions on, on the food environment side, the street food, and to the consumer side, how we educate our consumers. And we have a very good um, geographical distribution, we was, I would say, because we learn like the problems in Syria and in Nigeria is, is, is very different from each other. So really need the context based uh, solutions to tackle those problems. And so, well, that's, that's what I learned today. And I, I'm really, really happy that all of you can join us today for such a great session. Um, before we end, I, I think I have another volunteer from the panel, from the, from the participants. I would like to give the floor to Dr. Nancy Aboto, the Deputy Director of Food and Nutrition Division of FAO. Uh, Nancy, would you like to take the floor, also share your insight? Thank you so much. Thank you, Robin. Um, I don't really have any, any closing remarks per se, but I just wanted to take a moment and really personally thank all of the speakers and the panelists and the moderators today, and also to thank those that work behind the scenes that made today happen. You know, today's event really originated with, with the youth um, in the, the food and nutrition division came up with this idea, why don't we, why don't we put forward a, a, a side event? And it was really planned, coordinated, organized, and, and conducted today. Um, by, by a fantastic and inspiring group of, of young leaders. And um, I myself uh, heard some real inspiration and Maximo got us started saying we needed to, to, to think a little bit differently. And what I heard today, and, and Maximo, I wonder if you agree with me, I really heard some examples from a, a, across the food system that, that brought a different kind of thinking because we were here in the context of nutrition and I heard livelihoods, I heard sustainability, I heard circularity, I heard education. Um, I heard we have to have a connection to the food we eat. All of this within a, a relatively short discussion about nutrition. And to me, that, that really highlights a, a totally different way of thinking. It's a systems way, way of thinking. And, and hearing that from these young leaders today is, is very inspiring to me. And, and I hope that everyone that was able to attend today, and I, and I thank all of those who did attend, um, I hope that you feel the same inspiration and energy that, that I felt in today's panel. And so panelists, thank you so much, uh, moderators, speakers, and uh, Ricardo, uh, our Zoom master behind the scenes, thank you so much. And Maximo, thank you for your opening remarks. And um, I, I hope everyone did indeed take this uh, Rome Monday morning event as a great way to start your week because it sure has um, helped me get off to a good start. Thank you so much, Robin. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you so much. Indeed, uh, agri-food system approach today, we've been taken to, to discuss our issues. And yeah, dear friends, colleagues, um, don't forget this dynamic. And we hope you have a great day, a good week. And you can really act to tap your energy into the transformation of agri-food system. Thank you so much. We will end with a short video from Ms. Sherry Mendens and her friends from her message and her friend's message on how they're gonna act. It's a call for action. Thank you and hope you see you soon. FAO's mandate is stated as raising levels of nutrition and standards of living of people all around the world. FAO's work in nutrition affirms our commitment to this mandate and helps us realize it. 
It embraces the agri-food systems approach and aims for healthy diets for all. I've invited a few of my friends from across the world to share their ideas on mainstreaming actions to help raise levels of nutrition. Let's hear what they have to say. Healthy diet and good nutrition start from production. We should make sure our production systems are sustainable and also resilient, particularly to the crisis. Different stakeholders should share responsibility and work in partnership towards better production for healthy diets. يجب أن يكون هدف كافة أسواق المواد الغذائية هو تزويد المجتمعات بأغذية آمنة ومغذية كما يمكنهم المساعدة في توفير أنظمة غذائية صحية في متناولية وبتكلفة معقولة. El desperdicio de comida es un problema masivo. Los restaurantes y demás proveedores de alimentos juegan un papel crucial. Sin embargo, nosotros también debemos ayudar a combatirlo. Я начала выращивать свои овощи на балконе с начала пандемии. Это позволило мне готовить вкусные и питательные блюда самостоятельно. Да я вообще начала чаще готовить, что привело меня к тому, что теперь я больше забочусь о том, что я употребляю в пищу. Une alimentation saine est si importante pour tout le monde au quotidien. Elle vous aide à rester en forme physiquement et mentalement, ainsi qu'à préserver votre immunité. Healthy diets from agri-food systems are the cornerstone of good nutrition for present and future generations. FAO's work in nutrition aims to enable healthy diets for all and acts for better nutrition and beyond. Together, we can achieve a world where all people are eating healthy diets from sustainable, inclusive and resilient agri-food systems. Bye bye everyone. Thank you so much again. Bye bye. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Bye. All right. Bye. Thank you guys. Great video, Sharon. Thank you.